welcome to welcome to Subbase's Tips and Tricks. My name is Michael L. Pemmon, and today we're going to be looking at creating a portal guy style effects. So let's now you've got used to the music playing. Let's just stop those. So I'm just going to mute the channels. So you can see we've got a nice um, little tech house track going there. We've got a kick, some tops, a chord, and a bass line, and a little bit of vocals. Um, so this Portergeist effect, for those of you um, old enough to remember the film, is where the reverbs and delays warp into the vocal rather than happen afterwards. So to achieve that, we need to first choose what we want. And obviously, um, it's better to work with something which is already in the track. Um, I know a lot of people like to use uh, sample packs for their effects. This is the one place I don't think uh, is great for using sample packs because um, you want to create continuity in the track and you've probably already got enough material in there, whether it's drums, uh, some chords, bass or whatever, to actually perform and create your own effects. So to do that, let's identify what we're going to use. So since the Poltergeist effect was used in a vocal originally, let's use our vocal here. So this is the vocal at the bottom. What we'll need to do is get it into audio. So what I'm going to do is duplicate it. I'm then going to delete the MIDI and just copy this one part because we don't need to freeze and flatten all of it. Now I'm going to just show you what it's doing. So I'll unmute it and just play it from there. What I'm going, what I'm going, what I'm going. So uh, you'll notice there is delays and reverb on there already. That is actually on our auxiliary return. If you can see down here, dark hall and ping pong. When I freeze and flatten it, this will not be printed onto the actual effect. So what I'm going to do is right click and freeze and then flatten. That'll turn our MIDI into audio. The reason why we need that is we do need to reverse it. You can reverse in your simpler, but all I really want is the first little snippet of this. I don't necessarily need the whole vocal. So I probably just need this first little phrase. And let's disable the sends. You can either just turn them down, but I may want to add them in afterwards. So what I'm going to do is right click and go disable all sends. And you'll hear now the reverb and delays are no longer on this vocal. Let's just now reverse it. The great thing about um, Live 10, you don't have to go into the physical audio clip and hit reverse. You can actually hit it and then hit R and it will reverse the file. The reason why we're reversing it, it'll become clear once we add the delays. Because obviously when we add any sort of delays, it'll come after this vocal. So when we look at actually then freezing flat and again, once we've added the delays, we'll flip it back. So then the delays and reverb will come before it. So obviously now let's jump to our browser and I'm using Alt Command B to quickly open that. And you'll see in my collections tab, which is another brilliant new thing in Live 10, I've got um, already the echo saved. So I'm gonna add the echo in, uh, maybe a larger reverb amount and decay and feedback and you'll see i'm on dotted notes i've got one sixteenth one eighth um dotted so remember dotted halves the amount and then adds it onto the end so a dotted eighth would half it which would be a sixteenth then it adds it onto the end um that's probably one of my favorite ones the dotted eighth um so let's just have a listen to that so that's sounding good let's add some more delays and there's not really too much rhyme and reason to this. Um, you can add as many as you want. And you can also, if you're feeling um, a little extra tricky today and you want to try something else, try actually modulating, automating, or doing something with these uh, delay parameters. So, for example, um, I'm going to turn it to I'm going to turn it to time, which means it's free of sync. I'm just going to turn it up a little bit in the milliseconds. And why not use our brilliant Max for Live LFO? 
And this is something I really love because I love adding LFO to anything. Uh, so go to your uh, Max for Live stuff, go to Audio Effects, and you should have your LFO in here. And actually, you can see he's already saved to my Instruments tab. I'm now going to click Map. I'm then going to map it to the time. Obviously, that is pretty crazy. That is because the rate is too fast. So I'm going to turn the rate down a little bit. Just sort of slowly modulating it. And the offset is where you can actually set where it's kind of positioned at, where it's going to shift around. But I actually feel like it's going quite well. So with lower time values, the pitch is going to be higher. And with higher time values, um, in terms of, like, say, 100 milliseconds is going to be lower in pitch than one millisecond. So if we just have a listen to see that what that effect is doing, it might be too much. So you get that pitch down effect. So maybe a bit more feedback and less depth, so it's not as drastic. And of course, if you wanted, you could actually automate this. I can't currently do that at the moment, I don't think. See, it's grayed out because it's getting mapped here. But you could draw it in if you want to be a little bit more precise. Um, I'm going to add in maybe one more ping pong. And let's add our reverb. And I'm going to add quite a lot of decay time. So the reverb will last a bit longer. But I'm actually going to use a smaller room. So it's kind of like it's in a, uh, you know, like a small pipe or something. So I'll turn the size down. And let's take the high cut off the input. And let's just have a listen. So it's a bit too prominent. So I'm going to pull back the dry wet a bit. But that's the effect I'm going for. So what I'm going to have to do is, again, freeze and flatten it. That will print these effects onto the vocal. And what you'll have is a tail and uh, the main hit. So once we flatten it, and you'll see we've got the tail and the main hit. What we're gonna do is just pull the tail over the main hit and you'll see it's still there. Now, last thing to do, well, second to last thing actually to do, because we need to shift it in place probably, um, is reverse it again. So now if I click R, you'll see these are all the delay parts coming into the main hit. So if I just play it, I probably don't need to play it from there, so I'll just start it from here. And let's switch on these. What I'm gonna do. So you can see it creates a brilliant effect for your track. So let's just have a listen to that with everything playing. We'll start it from the middle again. So as you can see, we've used Elmet within our already processed idea and not had to try and fit something from a sample pack in there. And we've used this Poltergeist effect just on the vocals, but why not try uh, using it on drums, uh, your chords, any sort of lead synth, and it'll create a huge amount of impact. And obviously we've just used it in this uh, 24 bar loop, but it can be brilliant for bringing in an element after a breakdown or building into a breakdown. So I've been Michael L. Payman and this is Sub Bass Tips and Tricks. <laughs>